Okay, good morning everyone. I want to go over the um, the selection stuff we did yesterday uh, and also the saving the PSD issue. Um, I'm going to open our old, the thing we're working on. Uh, we learned how to save in PSD, so if I go to open recent, I have it sitting right there. And you'll see it comes in with all the layers, which was another thing we talked about. Uh, it's not opening all the separate images, which is fine. Um, remember when I'm dealing with these layers, if I turn the eye off next to each of them, we turn them on and off. And I can change the order of them by dragging them around. See that? Puts the coffee in front. Well, actually, let's show a better example of that. Um, I'm going to move the bike. And you know what else I'm going to do? Control Z. Uh, I'm going to rename it because I have a hard time remembering it otherwise. Uh, I right mouse click this and I go to somewhere on here. It's going to say rename. And what else I'm going to do? I'm just going to double click it. Ah. I'm not getting any of this right right now. Click on it and hold. One of these damn things is going to let me rename it. <sighs> Release. Uh, as I said, there's just too many selections in these things these days. Um, oh, uh, click on the text. Click on the text. Clicking on the text. That's what you do. Copy. bike. Background will leave background. And notice this, the background has a lock on it. What that means is that we can't get rid of it uh, easily. Uh, we also can easily relock it um, with this lock icon here. Yes. We can do it to other layers too if we're happy with them. But we're not necessarily. So uh, I'm going to go to the coffee layer, which is on top, and I'm going to move it right there. And then just to show you, I'm going to put the bike in front of it. Now the bike's in front of it, and I can move the bike here, let's say, and we'll put the coffee back in front of it there. Okay, let's go back to our selection tools, which again deal very heavily with color. Remember that, the 8-bit the values, uh, red, green, and blue, 0, 255, 0, 255, 0, 255. Um, let's open another JPEG, the ones we downloaded, if you remember. Uh, let's see what coffee 3 is. That's good. And this will actually be a tricky one. Uh, watch this if I go in a bit. I'm going to use the hand to move around. Um, because this is using depth of field. It's out of focus here, it's in focus here. So the stuff that's in focus should pull pretty easily, but this is going to get a little bit trickier. Um, using the selection tools we talked about yesterday, uh, over here we have rectangular marquee, elliptical marquee, uh, I'm going to start using the magic wand because uh, a lot of this will pull pretty easily. That's a fairly high tolerance. Remember, the tolerance value on the magic wand is the number of values around the pixel. Like, let's say, you know what? I'll even do it. Um, I'm going to grab the eyedropper here because the eyedropper tells us color values. So if I click that, that is the color value there. Let's make that bigger. RGB sliders. Uh, this is, this is going to flip it back. This is another one of those Adobe things. When you get this double arrow dealy, that means they're going to shove it back over to the wall. But if I double click it, it should pop back out. That should be true for any of these. Um, I want a bigger color display. I'm going to go back to Essentials, which gives me that color display. There are other ways I can change that too. And that sort of brownish beige coffee color is 211, 205, 171, red, green, and blue. If I start using this selection tool, Magic Wand, I'm going to select 30 values around it in each direction if I remember properly. Uh, so let's see. Yep, that got a lot of stuff. I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to keep selecting like that. And you'll see to the sharp edges it should be fine. It's when we get back here, it's going to get a little bit uh, dicey. Ooh, that one's too big. Control Z that. Um, I'm going to start using 
the quick select tool which uses the size of a brush this is set on minus I want it set to plus uh, remember all our controls for our tools are up here um, and I'm going to start plussing to it and this lets me paint a little bit uh, what this does is this takes the size of the brush in this case 35 pixels it averages all those and then looks to the edge of that Now this dark stuff is going to get harder. Oh, see? Let's make the brush smaller. Control Z. Uh, you'll see me do something sometimes. I'll, um, like I have to get this little stuff down here. So let me go do that. And then I'm going to release, because when I release it will save it. It will also refine the edge. I should be looking up here. Uh, let's do that up here too. that went too far. Control Z undoes it. Uh, I'm going to go back to my magic wand. Uh, my magic wand takes a much tighter tolerance. I'm going to make a, or can, I'm going to give it a tolerance of five. Uh, it's on addition, which is good. Ooh, five might even be too much. Let's try a tolerance of two. And you know what else we're going to do? We're going to zoom in there a bit. Uh, I'm going to put the pointer there and control plus plus and then I'll use these sliders to move around a bit as you see we have an edge in there but it's a very dark edge uh, there's some other stuff we can do to get that I may work on it but let's see what happens if I grab now that's better I'm gonna hold down my shift I don't need to hold down my shift but I'm going to that see that much tighter tolerance is working for me let's try up here too it can be such a small tolerance, it almost gets nothing. Let's get that hole. Come on. You know what? I might go back to my quick select wand. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use these bars on the image to move around a little bit. Over here, let's get this with quick select. You can see that wherever uh, we see an edge, the computer can see an edge too. So you have to think about that in terms of color value. That might be too far. I'll take a look at it later. Uh, this is a good tricky selection though. Um, these should work pretty well inside here because as long as they stay inside, oh, went too far. <sighs> let's make the brush smaller. Okay, let's see what that does for us. A five pixel brush. Good, good. I should release every now and again because then I'll catch these. Uh, these big areas, by the way, this is also a place where this might come in handy. If I'm adding to it anyway, you know, like that. You could spend hours on a selection, by the way. Um, selection is the power of Photoshop. Those who don't know how to select well can get what they want out of Photoshop. I'm going to take a look at the edge. Select and mask. Okay, now you'll see that's a very sharp edge. And um, those squarish edges there, uh, that's an interesting artifact of JPEG imaging that we'll talk about in our next video. Um, but this is probably still usable. This is where I want to feather that edge. If I feather it, I'm slightly blurring the edge. See that? And I might pull it in a bit, too. This shrinks it or increases it. Let's put a bigger feather on it. Not that big. That will work. I like that. Remember, we can show that's the original image. This is what we're going to pull off of it with that level of transparency. Um, I might want to do more work up here, but for right now, I'm not going to. I'm going to hit OK. 
and I'm going to zoom out a bit. And I'm going to go uh, edit, copy. Let's march over into our new composite over here and edit and paste. And it puts me a brand new spanking layer on top there. Ah, control Z, I still have the wrong tool held there. Uh, let's move this around. We'll put this coffee cup over here. And we do have to change the size of it. Uh, edit. We will free transform that. Uh, this moves it evenly. If I want to move it unevenly, I hold down shift and I can kind of, you know, we'll change the direction of this too. And like that. And let's move it. Let's say, let's say it's going to be here in front of that wheel. Now, something I can see now is I should have cleaned this out, and I might. I could even do that later. I have to hit the enter key. Uh, let's move the other coffee here and let's put the bike on top of both of them and let's rename this one we'll double click that text coffee 2 and we'll resave this image so that we'll save the new layers in there file I'm just gonna do a save am I yes I am um, you can save over PSDs to a certain level but we'll talk about problems with that later okay so my composite is starting to come together this is a good thing um, we're going to call that that. 